Hey server fans, Tony here from Own Sabers, and today another video for you. If you're new to the channel, I do install, repair, and review these sabers, so please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you're interested in my fonts or ultimate collection uh, for sale, it is available on RonanSabers.com. I am doing a giveaway for the YouTube channel. Once the channel re reaches 5K, I'll be giving away a fully installed NeoPixel lightsaber. A uh, link will be in the description for that as well. So, without further ado, let's get to the video. So this is my full lightsaber collection. Let's take a look. As you can see here, there's a lot of sabers. Um, that's kind of it. End of video. <laughs> so uh, I've got a lot of sabers here that I'll go through and talk about my personal collection, my Obi Wan collection, how those are separate, and all that jazz. Um, I'll talk about um, what they're installed with, if they are installed, if they're not installed, if I plan on keeping them, if I plan on switching them out, and for what. Um, history behind each saber and how I got it. Um, and so yeah. So first things first. We'll mention my first NeoPixel lightsaber I ever got installed. Um, well, first FX saber, I should say. Um, the first saber I got was by Shamim um, from Shamim Custom Sabers. He gave me a K4V2. Um, it was installed with a prism lightsaber, um, tri-LED, blue, uh, royal blue, um, green, and white, I believe. Or not. It was blue, royal blue, green, and white. And so it was a really, really good saber. Um, I upgraded to Profi uh, eventually and then ended up selling it because I wanted the most accurate. So I ended up switching out for this MK1, which we will get to. So then... After that, I installed my first NeoPixel lightsaber, which you will see here in the background. This is my Darth Maul lightsaber. Um, again, all these sabers will have links in the description if you want to go see the separate individual video of the install and stuff. I'm not going to be demoing a lot of fonts, more like giving, you know, an overall, you know, I guess rundown of the hilt and the install and process and all that jazz. So, link in the description for that. It'll be a terribly long library. And so, yes, my Maul I have installed initially with my first installed sabers. It's uh, very close to my heart. I've had it for almost four years now. Um, I've actually reinstalled it a while ago, um, a separate install video for that. Um, now it has a fully removable chassis. I did have it with just like all of my Sith fonts on there and a few extra ones that I was messing around with because it was just the one saber I had that I could just put, you know, anything on. Um, and now I've gone back and only put Darth Maul fonts from, you know, Phantom Menace all the way to the end of Clone Wars and even, I guess, when he dies on Tatooine from Rebels. And so, um, so that's just my Darth Maul lightsaber now um, for my Obi-Wan collection. Um, after that, I got an episode 1 Obi-Wan. Um, this right here actually isn't the original lightsaber I had. I had originally a Parks slash Corbanth episode 1 OBWK, um, but I ended up switching it out when 89 Sabers came out with their design, the OWK 1. Um, so I ended up selling that one, and it kind of paid for this one. Um, this one is installed. Um, very, very cool. Um, it's a lot, lot lighter than the other one, the Parks one. Um, blade cap. Um, it has a fully removable chassis system, just like the Maul. Um, I believe this is from Shimino's workshop. Um, I do have a separate video installing that as well. Um, all my ep fonts for this one just go through episode one all the way up to the uh, beginning of the Clone Wars um, because of Attack of the Clones and stuff. And so, yeah, I don't think I've actually done a review on this one since the fonts were the same for um, this, this one and the original Parks version I had. I decided I didn't really, or just haven't got to it yet even though I should. This one has two buttons and it's a lot funner that way. Um, moving on, next up actually wasn't this one when I bought it. I actually had that K4V2 for a while. And so now we go back to this one where I've replaced the K4V2 for the most accurate one out there, which is a Roman Props MK1. Um, and so this one's hella hefty um, compared to other sabers that I've had. This is probably one of the heaviest. Um, I've installed it with a Goth 3D disc chassis, a Smuggler's Outpost speaker, um, stock Neopix connector. Um, this one, again, all my Obi-Wan collection kind of serves as a shelf queen. I'm not going to, uh, you know, put the blade in and swing around too much. This is going to be telling the story, quotes and stuff, and I've actually debated on um, if I'm going to keep them that way or just uninstall them um, and just keep them empty and displayed, you know. Um, and so um, this is one of them where it's probably going to stay in installed um, just because of all the fonts and stuff I put on it. I actually went back recently and updated all of the fonts um, from A New Hope that was on here because it's just a New Hope fonts um, with the new V2 versions that Kyberphonic has released. And so very hefty, very, very nice. Um, 
And then last but not least, when I completed the collection originally, that was my Obi-Wan collection, is this episode 3 lightsaber. And this is one of my favorite lightsabers. This has been um, like the treasure hunt of my life, is trying to find and hunt down the saber. Now an honorable mention is this Inception here. When the first episode 3 Obi-Wan lightsaber was released, um, one of the first ones I believe that was released was this Inception. And so, I w and of course, who doesn't like the movie? And so um, we ended up, I ended up uh, waiting on that and just waiting and buying it because I didn't have the money back then. I didn't install it. Well, when I originally wanted episode three lightsaber, I didn't end up buying one until a long time later. And I was like, oh, I'll just buy the K4V2. It'll be, you know, as first built. So it'll kind of look like this one, but it wasn't quite it. And so when Anion Sabers uh, released that they were going to release this hilt, I was like, that would finish my collection. As you see, it didn't work and I have multiple sabers past then, but um Anyways, this had completed my Obi-Wan collections thus far, and so this is installed with Profi as well, um, a goth 3D Echo chassis. This has um, a Clone Wars font. It goes through Clone Wars all the way till the fall of um, Anakin, and then one Rebels font on here. And so a very, very nice install, if I do say so myself. Um, I, do, I don't know if I will switch out the smuggler, this for a Smuggler's Outpost speaker, but that is the way to go. Um, but this is the Shelf Queen, the the one that really completed and sold the lightsaber. Now, as accuracy goes, this is pretty spot on to the Master Replicas version. Um, I know there's the most accurate, or claimed to be the most accurate, um, high ground saber out there um, for all of you, you know, accuracy fans. But that conf these three sabers plus them all was my initial Obi Wan collection. Now, um, link in the description for that as well below. And so then after that, um, I was like, oh, I'm done, you know, this is it. I'm just going to be installing sabers. And as doing so, I came across and got notifications about like, you know, Seven Chambers is making, making the most accurate and, and that they're doing some tons of, you know, um, science and, and, you know, whatever the, the technical term is for the math that they were doing. And they're like, we just got the most accurate saber out there. And I was like, well, Luke's kind of, you know, a uh, uh, part of Obi-Wan's story. His lightsaber is almost a direct replica of what his lightsaber was. And actually the V2 that I have here is actually the shared stump between the two. And so um, I just thought it was like part of the story. And so next, and my next saber in progression after getting these three lightsabers, one, two, and three, um, I ended up finally being like, this is going to be my last saber. I always say that when I buy another saber for all those that don't know. I'm always like, this is my last one. You can ask Jeremy. Um, I'm always like, this is going to be it. And then like maybe a week later, I'm like, hey, Jeremy, check out the saber. And then he's like, you did not. And so this was one of those sabers where it's like, yeah, I got it. And this is it. And it hasn't been. So anyway, so this is the mom of all heroes. This is the most accurate so far for the mom of all heroes or, or cave scene um, slash hero lightsaber out there. Um, this is not installed right now. Um, I haven't had time to install it, honestly. Um, I've been working a lot, and I mean, it has the chassis in there that I 3D printed and kind of just left there, and so that's kind of funny. Um, but this one, originally when I bought it, it came with extra parts and stuff, which you can see here. This one's the idealized um, rings on there. Um, and I have an unboxing review for that. And Seven Chambers is, is such a good pal um, because of that. Um, just everything that they're doing so far. I had a Voss at one point, which I actually thought about including in this video at one point, but I sold it, and so, um, and all this other jazz. So I got that and I was like, I'm done, you know, and then there was another. And so I believe after that, I ended up having, um, you know, the Voss, and then I ended up um, getting a Dark Saber, which I ended up selling as well. Um, and there's a few Sabers that just didn't really stay. Um, the next one that stayed, I believe, was this one. Um, I think it stayed like this collection for a while, just these five Sabers, one, two, three, four, five, not including this mom, we'll get there. Um, so then we get to this one. now. This one, I wanted a V2 or a version of the V2 that Obi-Wan had in New Hope. Um, if for those that don't know, this was a shared prop in A New Hope, which actually was later used in Return of the Jedi, which is known as the V2. Um, and there was a wire, which I end up drilling holes for that. It actually came that way when I bought it. It had a little kill switch here that turned on the motor and this would spin. And you know, and actually there's new evidence out that it wasn't the neck that spinned, it was this little nipple. And then later Anakin, not Anakin, Mark Hamill or Luke Skywalker or someone, or even Alec Guinness might have, dropped it and broke this thin neck here, which caused this whole emitter to spin. And eventually in Return of the Jedi and so um, so we'll get there too with the seven chambers v2 that that's either coming out or out right now I guess it's out right now for pre-order definitely go check that out um, but it'll be way more accurate than this this is an Anakin Starkiller lightsaber um, and originally it had the electrical motor in there and um, everything that had you know electronics so this would spin and stuff like that the guy didn't want it because it was an unfinished product uh, or not product but um, project he was working on and sat on for years 
And I was like, I'll take it from you. It was like maybe four hundred dollars um, for everything, and I was like, yeah, sure. I might have been able to get him less, but anyway. So I got it. I got the electronics in for the um, motor and stuff, and I've kind of been sitting on it for a while. It does have a steel neck in there, um, and then I actually right now have a chassis in there. Um, I took out all the motor electronics. I might install this, might not. Haven't really decided yet. It doesn't really hold a one inch blade very well, and so it kind of you know, doesn't make me want to install it. I might, I do want to put a motor in there and have like the, you know, motor going. I actually might use this for the studio. So you have like the traditional Luke Skywalker lightsaber um, with the light and correct and stuff. But anyway, so I got that one. That one's kind of just been sitting there. I wanted something that connected the, you know, New Hope to Luke Skywalker and the, you know, trilogy. And so, yeah, then I got this guy. Now this, um, I, when I got the lightsaber from Shamim originally, um, I was like, okay, cool. You know, and Shamim went, you know, out of the business and stuff and I was like well who else can I buy that I really can honor that and, and kind of do that tradition where I, before I built sabers who did I watch and one of those guys is Mad Cow from Genesis Custom Sabers Rob hooked me up with the saber um, it was like 600 plus dollars um, only for me to go in and reinstall it with Profi so um, so it was $600 basically for the hilt um, and some of the electronic components um, and so you can see there, there's a profit board. I have a review going through about how I updated it and stuff. Um, removal battery. Smuggler's Outpost speaker. Very loud. Probably the loudest saber I own in this collection so far. Um, and it has all my favorite fonts on there. It has a sub blade. This is the first time I coded a sub blade um, at the time. And so a sub blade is basically isolating a pixel in Profi. And so you can code it to whatever color you want. And so what I did was um, basically isolated one pixel and I have it pulsing like a crystal while the saber's off, which you can kind of see there. Um, it's a lot more evident with this one. Um, so I got this one, held on this one for a long time. Um, and I was wanting to it be, I thought I was expecting it going to be, it was going to be like different. I thought it was going to be, you know, thinner and, and more comfortable to hold or something. And it's not bad. It's just a bit thicker than I thought it would be. And so, um, I was like, this is good. But then I was like, oh, I, I don't want to beat this up. I was going to be like my go-to saber. And then I was like, I, I don't want to beat it up. Even though it's like the weathered version. <laughs> weathered version. I apologize. But even though it was the weathered version, I wasn't terribly set on, um, destroying it, you know? So that's where this saber comes in. So this is my custom MHS Saber build. Now it was weathered by the wonderful Benji from Nerf Herder Customs, and he gave me a chassis for it, and I installed it. Um, beautiful, beautiful Saber. I replicated the Luke buttons, um, so this one blinks when it's on, and the red one blinks when it's off. And then I did also a sub blade for this as well, so when the Saber's off, it'll blink like a crystal, just to give the Saber a bit of more uh, life. And so also has a Smuggler Outpost speaker, even though it's not as loud as this one because it. Um, the chassis ends here, and all this is space. So I might still go put a uh, like one inch connector in there, and you know, make it maybe a little louder if I put a uh, PVC pipe in there. I don't know. We'll see. So that kind of concludes that stuff. And one of the last ones I picked up around the same time actually I got this one installed was that Revan saber you see in the back. Now that is a Revan the Crusader, um, one by Pearl or Harbor. No, it's not Pearl Harbor. It's just Hard Harbor um, sabers. And it was a limited run. They only did a few of them. Um, it's kind of weird actually. That saber was installed with a tri-LED red, blue, green. And I was like, okay, cool. And the guy was only selling it for maybe $400. The hilt alone was about, you know, 150 300 I think I think it was 350 and so I was like well that's a freaking steal with profi board costs right now and you know I can just convert it to NeoPixel not that big of a deal and so what I, my idea there is to have a Jedi saber for myself and then a Sith saber for myself and so that serves as my personal collection so the difference between these sabers here with Maul included and then these sabers and my Revan Crusader is that these are my personal lightsabers. These are my custom, you know, Cyrus Ronin, my Star Wars character. That's what these sabers are. These are mine if I had to go to sabers. These are my collection. This is the Obi-Wan collection. This is telling his story from when he's Padawan all the way till the fall of the Republic and so on till his death. And then on with lineage with Luke Skywalker. Um, and so what's finally getting there, explaining the collection, I was like, okay, I'm done, blah, 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 blah you know, that's it. I found a Facebook uh, guy, he sells sabers all the time, I forget his name, but um, he went in and was like, hey, I'm, I'm selling this Ultimate Hero, or not Ultimate Hero, sorry, Mom of All Heroes, that is the most accurate because of the um, accuracies that's that's being done. And I was like, well, what accuracies? I thought that was already, you know, the most accurate. And it is, it's very, very accurate. But this one comes in with, um, I had blemishes and stuff on this one that I caused when I was, you know, just messing around with it and picking it up and moving it places and stuff like that. Um, and so... 
there's this one that's just kind of my first one these are both first gen model heroes elite versions so these both came with extra parts i'm actually selling the extra parts right now on my uh, website and so definitely go check that out if that um, is still available um but yeah so i got this one and you can kind of tell i'm not sure how well you can tell but um I can put photos up here probably, but um, there's accuracy mods done to the Model Hero to replicate the prop that was used. Um, the tri-ring is rusted to um, basically death, um, and so it's really loose there, but it's really, you know, beat up. The gray here underneath the control box is a darker gray. You can see it more prominently here. And then this here is more of an anodized textured paint. Um, and it's paint on this rim here and paint on the bottom of this emitter as well um, versus the model heroes originally doesn't have that it has the brass option and the copper neck option um, this is actually the aluminum option that he painted over and so um, so this is going to be my shelf queen when and if I guess it's when when the crystal reveal hap comes from seven chambers and the I already have the re reveal board for this um, once I get that um, this will be my static hero that is going to be with the Obi-Wan collection. This is not going to be installed fully. Um, I might maybe later, if I decide that the crystal chamber really needs light up, um, I might do some type of system that lights just the crystal up. Um, but for the most part, this will be it. This will be the part that goes right here underneath and that'll finish my collection. This will be in a glass case, beautiful, displayed, done. Now these pieces, what this, this uh, thing is going to be now is the saber I will install. So this is going to be the one I'm not afraid to beat up because this is a steel neck and I'm like, mm, what a waste if I can just display it and I really wanted to see how sturdy these things are. And so this is going to be the one I can beat up and not be worried about it because I have a beautiful display one right there. And so this one's going to be the one I can beat up and stuff. Um, I thought about doing that with my V2 um, that I'm going to get from 7 Chambers, but um, speaking of what, that, we'll get there too. But um, I was thinking about doing it with my V2, but I was like, no, I kind of want you know, this looks like a saber and have something different and stuff. So yes, the one that's not as accurate, even though the gen two, um, okay, so we'll get there. We'll, we're there now. So next up on the list of sabers that have not arrived yet, that will be, um, we have a third model of all heroes, but this is a gen two version. So this is, ac um, the gen two version will be made hundred percent in the UK. Um, Lewis's hometown from seven chambers it is a hundred percent well, more well machined, more accurate because more references came out. They could do more measurements, all jazz. So the Gen 2, which is actually even more apparently accurate than this, um, I will be having as well. <laughs> Ironically, I don't think I'm going to keep it. But um, I'm either sell one of these. I, I don't know what yet. I'm going to sell one of them. Um, and then I'm going to get a V2 from them as well, which I will be keeping. And I will be making sure that that is good. Um, also, behind the scenes, you don't know this. I have or see this, I guess. I have a Solos Hold V2 that I will be selling as well, which I need to get weathered up and stuff and installed. And so I will be selling that. Um, and so, yeah. So that's all of it. That's kind of it. Um, now, I'll probably kind of go into depth about my personal sabers, I guess, uh, a little bit. So, um, originally my character was kind of an older public character. Um, it was supposed to be like 2,000 years before Phantom Menace, and um, I was supposed to be a Mandalorian Jedi, and everybody instantly thinks of Revan, and so I was like, no, I think I, I kind of like, because after reading I, Jedi, and after kind of, you know, Return of the Jedi and all that jazz, I kind of decided that I liked the New Republic era. I liked seeing Luke train the Jedi and seeing all of these different, you know, Jedis that hold blasters, you know, that type of stuff. And so um, I kind of started growing on me corn horn and, uh, you know, getting that universe and stuff. So my whole Jedi story with these sabers is that I'm after Return of the Jedi. This is supposed to be a thin neck. So also upon the saber of, of going into the grand scheme of things of sabers I will have. I plan on remaking the saber for a display piece um, with a thin neck system. So it'll basically be the same design, except this will actually be a thin neck because the module hilt system has a thin neck system now, and I want to utilize that. And so that'll be one of the last sabers um, that I'm going to collect. Don't quote me on that. And so, anyways, going back into this, I wanted to make my own fonts, and now that I've been making fonts for a while now, um, I want to make my own font. I haven't quite done it yet. I've been trying to replicate and trying to, like, master what I really want as my font. And I'm not going to end up selling it. I'm not going to um, do anything, but it'll be my Saber um, font. And so I'll make a grand, you know, display of it and show you guys, I'm sure, but um, it'll be just for these two Sabers. I guess three. The, the Darth Maul. I mean, Darth... Revan is technically mine. Crusader. I call it Crusader. And so, yeah. So those will be my personal fonts, the ones I, I can bring to places, the ones I can wear on my belt, those, that type of stuff. Those will be those sabers. Um, and so they'll have only fonts that I really, really like on them. These will all be character fonts. Um, all of them have Obi-Wan or Luke Skywalker or Maul specifically designed and only colored to those specific fonts as seen in the movies and stuff. So... 
that kind of concludes, I guess, the, the... Oh, and so I have two episode threes, as you see, the OWK3 and the Inception. I've had this one for a while. There was a blemish kit originally, but there's nothing really blemished about it besides... I actually don't think there's anything blemished about it. Um, I'm going to end up selling it or uh, selling it or giving it away. I've been doing giveaways um, or doing a giveaway now. I'm going to end up probably doing that giveaway for that as well because um, I don't need two episode three of ones I probably don't need two moms, but you know, I just not going to use the, the, the next system for the, uh, inception. So with all things being said, that kind of concludes my, um, full Neo pixel collection. Majority of these in, are installed. I'd say about five eighths installed and then about three eighths not. And so, um, so yeah, um, I, again, starting my collection, I never thought I would have got this far. I thought once I finished this collection, I thought it was going to be it. And I thought that, um, this was going to be the end and stuff, but as I installed more, I learned new things about sub blades and accents and, um, you know, gesture features. And now Profi OS 6 is out and I'm making fonts and all this other stuff. And I had no idea that it was possible and that I'd get this far and have, you know, 10, 11 sabers just lying around. And so, um, it's been a really cool journey, um, and stuff like that when buying sabers. And I think I'm going to slow down the collection. I think this is going to be it. If I do end up buying sabers, I'm going to switch them out for another. You know, if I buy, you know, another V2 or something, I'm going to sell this one and get another V2 or, or so like that. I have to remain at a constant, you know, saber collection now. And so I'm going to end up, you know, trading out some or this and that. And so, um, yeah. Oh, I also have a, a super stunt Obi-Wan episode lightsaber from episode one from um, One Replica's coming in. That was only, it's a blemish set. It's like $80. And I was like, what the heck? If I'm not going to use this for display or, or like swinging around because you know, lightsaber's one inch isn't actually true to one inch. Um, I was like, One Replica's would be a good super stunt. I can beat it up, fully removal chassis. And so, because episode one is one of my favorites too, like grip wise. And so, yeah. So I'll have that to mingle around with. I'll settle on something and, and stuff. So about, let's see, 13 sabers. We'll say 13. That's my birth date, day, number. So we'll stick with 13. Yeah. I think that's it. If I didn't cover something, I'm sure I will in a 2023 or 2024 or whatever the next time I do a full Neo Pixel collection. And we'll see how much it changes in that next video. So I hope this was kind of fun. If you have any questions about my collection and if uh, you want to add to it and, you know, see what, in your opinion, how would your Obi-Wan collection look? How would, you know, it differ? Um, I have thought about getting a skinny flex because that is such a big part of Obi-Wan's, you know, collection is Anakin's lightsaber from episode three in the fall and him having it for 20 years on Tatooine. Um, and so I thought about that for a long time. Um, we'll see if that happens. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review. I am, I'm glad I, I, you know, collect this many sabers and that I'm into the hobby and I install them. And so of course, I hope you have a wonderful day and may the force be with you.